Hello, everybody. Rabbi Abe here. Okay, so first of all, I sincerely want to thank all of you who saw my recent video last Sunday posted on the new moon of Scorpio. Uh, it was our first viral video, if I can say that. So that was very exciting. Uh, at the same time, I saw hundreds of comments, and I'm doing my best to answer each one, at least to some degree. But it was clear to me that I wasn't necessarily so clear. Uh, and I'd like to clear up a few points and also give some tools, uh, not only to the scorpions uh, on the planet, but to all the rest of us who are not don't happen to be a Scorpio. But in the month of Scorpio, we all become a Scorpio. So this video is to give some tools and tricks to help us elevate, because that's the point. That's the point. So uh, just to get ourselves started, um, I want to tell you a quick little story that was from one of the sages. Uh, I believe it was the Rambam, but it's a, it's a little kind of parable about the difference between uh, behavior, behavioral change, and uh, nature, nature. So basically, you know, uh, this, uh, this sage, very learned man, took a friend of his to a pub, and he wanted to prove a point about this principle of nature versus uh, behavioral change. So he took him to this pub, and they go into the pub, and they sit down, and it's amazing. What's going on over there is there's cats all over the place with aprons, and they have trays, and they're walking on their hind legs, and they're waiting on all the tables. I mean, picture this. You have a pub, and it's the old, the servers are cats, and they have these little trays, and they you know, serving drinks and everything else. Great. Okay. So they're sitting there enjoying themselves, and the rum bum decided, you know, he's going to prove his point now, and in his pocket was a little mouse. So he took the mouse out and put it on the floor, and lo and behold, what do you think happened? All the cats dropped their trays and they began to chase the mouse. What's the moral of the story? Moral of the story is we can change behavior. We are capable of that. But our DNA, what's within us, our nature, very difficult to change. Very difficult. I don't want to say impossible because some changes are possible. But it's sort of not the point. I mean, the creator didn't put us here for all to morph our DNA. That's not the point. Then what is the point? Because if we will just act out our nature, um, for the most part, we'll be in a chaotic situation. And if you look around, we are in a chaotic situation. Um, but at least individually, if not collectively, we can go out of that chaos to whatever degree we apply this particular principle. So in Genesis, I'm just going to get a little biblical here for just for a minute. Don't get uptight. Uh, in Genesis 15, 5, there's a little story about Abraham. Abraham is having a conversation with God, and it's about, you know, having children. He says, you know, I'm old, God, I'm old. How can I have children? You know, because God tells him, you know, your descendants are going to inherit everything and whatever it is. I'm old. How can I have children? I'm 99 years old. My wife is 90 years old. How can we have children? And then in verse 15, 5, in Genesis, it says something very interesting. It says, God took him outside and told him, look at the stars and count them if you can count them. All right? Very nice. So almost sounds like, you know, this story, God is having a, you know, casual conversation with Abraham at the coffee table. And uh, no, what is it about? So we go to the Zohar. And the Zohar is the source text of the Kabbalah, which decodifies the Bible. What does it say? It says something amazing. It says what the Creator did was take, uh, was tell Abraham to go out, to go out of the influence of the stars. Now we know historically and biblically that Abraham was a master of astrology. Okay. And that's how he kind of guided his life, even though he was an extremely spiritual person. But this control, if you will, wasn't yet given and also wouldn't be given for a while. But what God was telling Abraham is, go out of your astrology. That's what the Zohar says. Go out of the astrology. And you can. 
And then he had a name change. It's interesting. He had a name change. His name was Abram. His name became Abraham and was an additional like letter H in English, but the He in Hebrew, which is five numerically. And five represented the five books of Moses. So that was the beginning of the ability to spiritually change, change the circumstances by becoming a spiritual person. And I don't say a religious person. What does it mean to be a spiritual person? So we'll get there. There's another story in Genesis 32, 28, which further elaborates on this point. And it's about Jacob, the patriarch. And Jacob is running away you know, from his brother. He's afraid of his brother. His brother wants to kill him, right? Esau, Esav in Hebrew. And it seems to be that he fell asleep in the evening and he put his head down. And then he had a vision or a dream. And the angel of his brother Esau came to him and wants to kill him. This was also the angel of death. And so they wrestled. It says they wrestled. A man wrestled with him. Now, just a, a more Kabbalistic secret that's in here. It says, uh, um, And he was alone. He was alone. Levado. Levado in Hebrew means alone. Now, this is numerically 42. If you happen to catch my video, recent video, on the 42-letter names of God, you can go back, just go back, and you'll see it. It's right there on the thumbnail, a big a tablet of names. And this is how we can alter and change our process in life. But I, I, I don't want to confuse matters. But this this angel wrestled with him. And then, as the dawn was coming... It's very strange what it says. The Bible is sometimes very strange, but it's coded. We must remember. The angel says to Jacob, let me go because the dawn is coming. So Jacob says, no, I won't let you go until you give me a blessing. Well, why would the, why would Jacob want the blessing from the angel of death? I mean, that's a question. We can't answer that one at the moment, but we'll answer the more important question. The angel says, what's your name? I mean, you're an angel. You should know who you're wrestling with. But Jacob, you know, he's very polite. He was a simple man. He says, my name is Jacob. The angel says something which is important for all of us. He says, no, your name will now be Yisrael, which is Israel, because you have fought the divine, uh, the, the, the divine, you have fought the divine and you have conquered. You've conquered. That's strange. But what does that mean? Then we go to the Zohar, the Book of Splendor, the main source book text of Kabbalah. And it says there's something unbelievable, that Jacob in that moment elevated. He elevated from his normal state, which is called Yaakov, Jacob, his normal state of nature that we all exist in. We all exist in the framework of nature, okay? That's the natural way we do things. Uh, uh, you know, just act naturally. No, not according to Kabbalah. Not at all times anyway, of course. Yeah, of course we should act naturally. But there are times where we should definitely not act naturally because that's what gets us into chaos. That's what gets us into confusion. That's what gets us into problems. But if we know what to do, we can elevate, bypass that, and even create miracles out of the situation because actually that's why it's came. it came. So let me be clear about this. This has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with Judaism or Jews or any religion whatsoever. This is a code to give us insight to the difference between nature and the elevated state above nature. And that's what it's about. So Jacob was one thing. Yisrael is another thing. And it, again, it's a state of elevation. And again, no reflection on what the teaching you practice or none, nothing at all. It's a state of consciousness of an individual, and I'll, I'll just make it simple, who truly wants to elevate themselves. An individual who really wants to rise above, who wants to work on themselves spiritually, who wants, you know, who wants to be better in life, who wants uh, more out of life, which is kind of the main thing. It's a person who has the desire and the drive, you know what, to maybe be different than the rest of the population because 
I want to elevate. I want to elevate. So when we're in the month of Scorpio, uh, just now, how do we relate this to Scorpio? You know, again, in some of the things I said, maybe it wasn't clear. I wasn't, I was not saying we should follow astrology. No, I wasn't saying that. Uh, you know, the reason why a Kabbalist, someone who studies the Kabbalah, will learn about astrology and will learn about the constellations, it's not to follow it, not to say, you know, well, it's uh, Tuesday in the month of Scorpio and I shouldn't drive on the low bridges, right? No, you know, that's not the reason. The reason is to get to understand the characteristics of, all of us, because number one, every month influences all of us, and it also contributes something to the year energetically. Number two, it influences all of us as individuals because, you know, like in Scorpio, we all become a little Scorpio. Next month is Sagittarius. We're all going to become a little bit of that and so on. And what is it that we need to know? How do we get the best out of the month? That's the question always, because the Kabbalist always wants to get the best out of everything. I mean, you know, it's true. You can have it all. It's just not the way we may think, okay? It doesn't mean whatever we want. It means to have everything in a balanced way. Another conversation. So the point here is that it's all about this elevation. And that's what Jacob did. And you know what? He Instead of his brother, when they in, in fact met, was approaching him and actually wanted to kill him and bite him, it says that he kissed him. Now, we have to go deeper into the books to understand the commentaries, how, how you know, it, it was like a vampire, right? He wanted to bite him in his neck. But instead, he couldn't help himself. Esau, his twin brother, couldn't help himself, and he kissed him. So clearly, Jacob took control over the situation. That's what we want. Our goal is always in any given situation, obviously the chaotic ones, to elevate and to create out of that miracles and the change. It's a change. And then we need to be like the cats, a behavioral change in the right moment, even though we don't change our DNA. But why were we given this DNA? And so there's other things involved over here. This past lifetime involved we're given a particular constellation to facilitate our tikkun, correction, or, in other words, our karmic work in this lifetime. So, as I said, it's not the point to follow astrology to see this is what's going to happen to me, and that's written in stone, because it's not. You know, Abraham the patriarch, again, who was a master astrologer in the Book of Formation, explains that the stars impel, but they do not compel. That means they influence our nature. But we don't have to be. It's not a must. We can change it. We can go above it. And certainly, every constellation has its good points. We're not looking to change that. But the negatives, we're looking to transform because that's why we have them. And, you know, it says that every person's weakness is also his strength. And the reason why we're here is to transform our weakness into a strength. And when we do that, we actually create amazing things for ourselves and for the people around us. So a little bit about Scorpio, just to maybe make the point for Scorpio, for the month of Scorpio and for the Scorpions. And God bless you all. There's so many of you. It's the most powerful sign. As I said, it's very powerful because as I mentioned in the last video, it is Akrav. Akrav in Hebrew is the scorpion. And the scorpion is Ayin and Bet, 72 on the outside, and Kufresh, Kar, cold, on the inside. Now, that does not mean at all that scorpions are cold. No, not at all. But they do have fire and ice. Fire and ice. And that's the intensity, right? It's fire and ice. It's judgment and mercy. Okay. They could be the most merciful people on the planet. On the other hand, the, the other side is also true. They can also be very judgmental and revenge and all of those things that go along with that package, okay? And passion, ruled by the passion. This month is ruled by passion. Sex, because we know 
also Scorpio is ruled by, you know, every constellation has um, a body part associated with it. And Scorpio is the sexual organ. And so they are ruled by their passion in life. Doesn't necessarily need to be sex, but it's passion for things, passion for life, passion, you know. And, you know, if it is sex and it's out of hand because that happens to people, that energy can be transformed as we would like to transform the other, some other characteristics, perhaps. I mean, sex in its place, of course, is a wonderful thing. It's the blessing the creator gave us. But sometimes it's not in place and it causes problems when it becomes a negative thing, when it becomes extreme, when it becomes an affair, when it becomes, you understand, right? When it, when it's not in a balance, any even good thing, uh, you know, too much of a good thing is also not necessarily good or if it's not in balance. So balance is the key over here. But it can be transformed into passion for whatever. You know, there's a, there's a word for that that Napoleon Hill used, sexual transmutation to use sexual energy, which is the greatest desire of a human being, that and hunger, right? They're, they're two, two things, right? Is the, the desire for food, when you're hungry and the desire for sex when you're, you know, so, um, the desire can be transformed. The sexual jar desire can be transformed into desire for success. Let's say into desire for health. Anyway, there's a concept like that. Again, I don't want to go, you know, I have a tendency to go off into a tangent and, you know, <laughs> I want to try to stay on track. Okay. So, you know, the thing of Scorpio is in, in one moment when things are not necessarily going right the way they feel they should, there's the crisis, Scorpio crisis. And again, this is not only for Scorpios, especially maybe for Scorpio who encounter this. Again, there's no, you know, not every Scorpio is the same. We talked about truth and love of truth and hating lies. That's true. But yeah, just like everybody else, there are some Scorpios who don't always tell the truth. So again, everyone is an individual. We all have a soul, which is different, and we all have a different karmic uh, thing to deal with. We have different things to deal with because out of the negatives, we create the positives and we elevate. So the Scorpio crisis is when everything goes dark. Nothing is good anymore. In the moment, and again, I'm just saying it's possible. They see black. What now? All right. They can, they can really become also self destructive. God forbid. And that's not a good thing. So the very simple solution, let's say if you're with a Scorpio is to remind them of the good times, bring them back, bring them to the place where it was good. I'll say it simply like that. Whatever. When things were, when you were really happy about something, when you were really, uh, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't matter why. What, but when you really had an extremely good emotion happening with you, preferably in the recent past, go back to it. Go back to it. Bring them back to it. And if it's just you on your own, go back to it yourself. But this will require an effort, okay? Because when we're in that place and it feels depressing, it feels black, and you don't, you just don't see the light, you really have to work hard. So, you know, do some tricks for yourself. Uh, record this, a message that you can play to yourself, you know, when, you, when that happens or, uh, text a friend uh, that knows you and loves you and, you know, it can help you in this situation. Okay. That's the crisis mode. We got to get rid of it. And, um, a, another issue that I would address is the issue of, you know, the revenge or taking people out of your book. Um, you know, you know what I mean. They betrayed me and they're out of the book. Okay. You erase their name and that's that. I get it. Okay. And again, a lot of us have that, but I'll tell you, you're missing out. And I just want to give you a little example. Did you ever let yourself down? Whoever you are, whoever we are, Scorpio or not, did you ever let yourself down? Did you ever make a mistake? And maybe it was a mistake that cost you. Maybe it was a bad investment. Or maybe it was, uh, you know, the wrong, you chose the wrong relationship. You made a mistake. Do you trust yourself? Why? If anybody in your life would make as many mistakes for you, 
as you have for yourself. Would you trust you? I don't think so. You wouldn't trust them for sure not. So here's the thing. Instead of looking pe- looking at people as, you know, I trust them, I don't trust them, don't look at people that way. Don't look at anything that way. And again, I'm saying this goes for all of us. Look at everyone, every individual, whoever they are, good or bad, and everything that happens to us in life. There's a message. There's a message. Don't kill the messenger. Because if you kill the messenger, part of that message is going with it. It's 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 an energy when it's not apparent to us what's going on right here and how could this person betray me or give me bad advice or tell me to do whatever. Don't look at it as them. Look at it as a cosmic message that they are merely the vehicle for. Because I will tell you at another level, it's absolutely true. In the level of souls, we all, you know, uh, understand that what we're coming for it's almost like we're just paid actors or not paid actors, but we're acting with each other on the stage. And I sort of hired you even to cause me a difficulty so I could rise above and excel. I could rise above out of a difficulty. You know, years ago, I had and then I had a very I had real difficulty with conflict. I don't like it. You know, this is the Taurus in me. I don't like conflict. And I had a working relationship, a colleague who actually was a Scorpio, okay, happens to be. And I love him to pieces, but it was very difficult for me, right? I mean, we would get into confrontations and I couldn't, you know, it was, it was very difficult. So I would keep my mouth shut. And the next day, invariably, I would have a, a, a sinus headache. I would have a cold. I would, and it would take me days to get over this thing. Well, one day, you know, after I learned from my teacher more about how to deal with, you know, deal with myself, not with him so much, but with me, I understood, wait a second, welcome the confrontation, face it and deal with it. That's what you need to do. So P.S., I, I'll spare you the details, but we, we, both of us, me and he, my Scorpio colleague, elevated, we came out of conflicts. I no longer got these miserable sinus uh, things coming to me. So again, uh, this can also affect our health, just to be clear. Emotional states and our brain certainly affects our body and our health. And I have other videos about that. The point here is it's all about elevation. Look at everyone as a messenger. Don't finish them off. Don't take them out of the book. Change your headspace. Change your behavior. And say to yourself, wait a second, the universe is giving me a message over here. Now, I may not know what it is. That's okay. But you're creating the first level of an opening to get the answer. And you, when you really have a desire and you really open yourself up, the universe, the light, God, whatever word you like to use, is going to give you that. It's going to give you more answers. It's going to make it more clear for you. You might even have a dream about it. You'll have other people come and tell you in exactly the way you need. But when we get rough messages, it's because we might be stubborn. We might not be so open. And we need, you know, sometimes we need a, a you know, a smack. Sometimes we need a shock to wake us up out of our sleep. The bottom line is we're all here. We're all here to elevate. Same with judgment, by the way. But I did a video in the recent past about judgment. How do we handle judgment? We can't get rid of it. We shouldn't get rid of it because why do we have it? We have it to use for good. But again, you know, the negativity in this world pushes us to use our qualities, even potentially good qualities, in a bad way. Judgment should be used, but the judgment should be always to the side of the good, as we said, meaning uh, justify. Use just judgment to justify to help the other person. Justify their behavior. Oh, they were late. Oh, maybe they, you know, whatever. They woke up late. They had a problem. Right, make an excuse for them. The same way we make excuses for ourselves, make an excuse for the other person who has seemingly wronged you. Why? Because it's going to be good for you and it's going to be very good for them as well. 
Again, these are all different ways we alter our own destiny. We create miracles. We create higher elevation. We create, you know, more synchronicity in our own life. Isn't that what we all want? That's it. I didn't want to make it too long, but here, here we go. There you have it. Be blessed, everybody. Love to everybody. And again, thank you for uh, making the channel more popular. And uh, I'll see you very soon in the next video. Be blessed.